Hi everyone, it's Marcy here from Stampin' with Marcy. I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator in southwestern Ontario, Canada, and I'd like to thank you for pressing play on today's video. Today I'm going to be sharing a adorable card using this super fun Taco Fiesta stamp set. Now I am using products that are um, no longer available, but... Um, I wanted to share anyways. I created this card a little while ago. So the I'm using the Radiating Stitches dies. These are out of stock right now. They are coming back, you guys. Just have some patience if you don't have them yet. They are fabulous. I'm also using my Stamparatus. Um, it has sold out. I will continue to use it um, because it is an amazing stamp positioning tool. And when you're stamping on colored cardstock, sometimes you do need that um, to get that ink a little darker. So we are also using, I'm not sure if these are sold out or not, the Enamel Dot Essentials. I'm using the white ones as well. My uh, designer series paper or DSP is the Butterfly Kisses. This is from the annual catalog. It is not carrying over either. So let's get started here. I've already die cut my um, frame here. And I am going to bring in my balmy blue and my blending brush. All right, so what I'm going to do is, I'm just gonna wipe off my silicone craft mat. And I'm going to, let's get this out of the way. So I am in camera view. I'm gonna pick up some of that ink and I'm actually, instead of using my grid paper, I'm using my silicone craft sheet because I can come back into here and pick that ink up from this. All right, so I just want to give that um, white background a little bit of color for my images to be popped up on. And then if you've got use if you're using your silicone craft sheet, then you can easily come back and pick that ink up that you have kind of blended off a bit. There we go. So then you just have to wipe that before you use it again for anything else. And there we have our lovely blended background. I'm gonna close that ink up. Okay, so I've already gone ahead and stamped. I've actually stamped most of my images. Um, I've got the two guacamole bowls and the um, fun um, nacho chips. And then on the inside, I've got a few extra. Now, the, this card came about because of a class. I'll show you after I'm done here. So my original color was Pale Papaya, which has um, retired or is retiring. I'm not sure. I'm pretty sure the ink pad um, is gone. They always go first and the ink refills. So I switched to Pumpkin Pie Light. It's just a smidge darker. So I thought it was a decent color substitution. So there is my bowl colored. And my original color was Granny Apple Green for the nacho, or for the guac. But I am so in love with this Lemon Lime Twist, which is a returning color. It's part of our new core color family. I wanted to use it. So... I am pulling these out to use instead. 
Let's zoom you in a bit more. All right, so now the, that was my light. So anywhere there's the dots, I am going to bring in the dark just to add a bit more um, texture to that. And we are going to set that aside for the moment. I'm coming in with my um, light old olive and I am coloring my entire cactus. Now you can color this dude any color you want. My card, I added the mustache and eyes because I thought, how fun is that? My chips um, and the sombrero in my original card were colored with So Saffron blends. Well, So Saffron is leaving us. So, I thought, let's try a color that we are going to have going forward because this fabulous set is um, carrying over into the catalog. So I thought, let's use something that you're going to be able to get if you don't already have this set. I am avoiding the lines as best I can. All right, we're gonna set that aside. Okay, so I wanna come back in here and because I gave it a minute to just soak up a bit and I wanna add just a smidge more of that color, that dark. And then come back in so I can kind of blend out the harshness of that line. And there we have our fun, not, um, I don't know why I keep calling it nacho, guacamole bowl. So I am going to quickly, I'm cutting off any of that excess. And I'm going to leave a little border around. And I'm just going to come around. I'm turning my paper, not my scissors, so that I have a fairly smooth. You're not going to get a perfect cut line unless you are using a die and this set does not have dies so we just do the best we can it's handmade with love not machine made so those tiny little imperfections is what makes it extra beautiful and filled with love for that recipient Oh, and I gave that a little much, so I'm going to come in and just trim that down. There. And there is our fun second guacamole bowl. All right. So I'm going to bring in my Stamparatus. Again, this is no longer available. I do apologize, but I will continue to use this. Okay, so just like the uh, retiring list, the um, slimline envelopes <clears throat> are retiring because they have that so that um, soft succulent color in it but i will continue to make slim line cards when the mood strikes so i went and purchased a couple of packages 
so that I've got them on hand. All right, so what I'm doing is I'm lining up where my elements are gonna be. And then this is gonna be here. And I'm going to, I want this up just slightly. And I am hoping that that is fairly straight. There we go. Close that over. Give it a press. And because photopolymer sticks, I'm taking my, there we go, my bone folder to slide that in. Okay, so I'm taking my black, my Memento Tuxedo Black ink pad. I'm going to wipe off. I do apologize for the glare. And let's get that out of the way. Okay. See, I'd like it a little darker. So that is why if you're fine with that, go you can go ahead with a block but because i want mine a little darker i am coming back in with my ink so that i can just darken that up so it's a little crisper of a sentiment and i'm happy with that that is so much better So, move that out of the way. Let's start building this card. So you can find all of the measurements as well as a list of the products that I used over on my blog. The link will be in the description box below. This is Sweet Sorbet, and it is cut to four by five and a quarter. And then we've got let's see, is this the inside? Oh, there we go. Yes, it's that one there. Just making sure I have the right piece of white because on my inside. Let's zoom you out a bit. On my inside, I have the um, couple nacho chips on the white. So let's glue you together. I thought it would just be fun. I had these extras. So I thought, let's do a fun inside with those extra cut nacho chips. Am I making you hot, hungry with the nacho chips and guacamole? <laughs> so fun. All right, so let's fold and burnish. Oh, I am there. I don't want to show you the whole mess on my table. Okay. My base is the Parakeet Party. That is the DSP as well, that pattern. So I've got my Parakeet Party here. I'm going to grab my stamp and seal. That gives me a nice piece to ad adhere that on. All right. Now, whoop. We are going to... Take that and apply that to the white 
making that just pop that little bit more. Let's bring that back in. I love my liquid glue. It is my adhesive of choice. Need to just scooch you over ever so slightly. There we go. All right, so let's build. I've already stamped ahead of time and cut out. So let's build our card. So I am going to be using Press and Seal as it helps to get your, and here's the sombrero. So this is the Lemon Lolly and this one here is the um, so saffron <laughs> i drew a blank there so you can see that um so saffron has a more orangey tone to it where this is a brighter this is more of a subdued yellow so this is a brighter yellow so we want to make sure that we've got enough space we want our little fun guy in the center and the guac on either side. And then we've got our nacho chips. And we're just going to kind of place them around like so. All right, I think I like that. It looks fairly balanced. So I am going to take my press and seal and right now I've got it stuck to my pants because I find if you don't de-stick it slightly, it may rip your cardstock. You don't want that after all that work of coloring and cutting. We can adjust that hat afterwards. So I'm just making sure my images that I have cut out are... stuck down fairly well and I'm just peeling that piece off slowly so I'm not taking those elements with me all right and I'm gonna avoid putting the hat on for the moment so let's add I wonder if I use my take your pick tool. Might be easier to add that without it sticking to my hands. So we're just adding our little dimensionals. I'm using the baby ones, the small. You can use whatever you have on hand. You might just have to cut down if necessary, if they're too big. Whoops, almost done. I didn't want to have you watch me color and fussy cut everything out. So to save time, I did it all ahead of time. And I find that sometimes when you're going to be using your, I'm gonna cut this in half when you're using your um, blends, I find if you stamp ahead of time and let it set so that it fully dries, I mean, it does not dry very quickly. However, here in Southwestern Ontario, we are more humid climate um, in the warmer weather. And I'm in the basement. 
my office is in the basement craft room so I find it does oops stay wet a little longer and this dude just moved so let's move you slightly over um, so I find it just better to I think this is easier and I'm just throwing them I'm not being careful so I'll have a big confetti dimensional back mess to clean up when I'm done all right so now we are going to bring this back in and there's all our elements and we are going to center that, give it a press, peel it back slowly and carefully. We don't have our hat on yet, so there we go. So fun, so cute. And we're going to use a half dimensional put the other half back on packet and I'm just gonna put this on top of the sombrero and I'm gonna give him just a dot of glue right there and then we can Use my reverse tweezers and there we go. Oh, so cute! All right, so next we are going to flip you over and add. I'm using more dimensionals. This may cost you more to pop in the mail this would be a dollar 94 here in ontario there we go you could eliminate one layer of the dimensionals or both layers of dimensionals if you chose i love things popped up and i think it's worth it All right, so I'm just coming in with, I think that looks good. I'm going to take a piece and I'm just tying a knot. Snip, snip, you're a little long. And then we need some of our embellishments. So one, two, three, four, five. And Come on, pick up. There we go. I like to add glue to make sure that my elements are sticking when the recipient opens that envelope. They're still in the right spot. They're not floating somewhere in that envelope. All right, and there is today's fun card. Oh, so cute. All right, so I said that I had done a class. I did a floating frame class. 
where um, my attendees created these two cards. So we had stamped an entire sheet, um, eight and a half by 11 of uh, cardstock with all of the elements for the um, Taco Fiesta. And then we fussy cut it out. I had them stamp three or four of each one of the different elements. And we used the um, stitched rectangles. I will not be parting with these. These are retiring. I'm not sure if they're sold out yet or not. Um, but it made a super cute card. And when I had extra elements left, we, I made this card and showed them that, you know, use, you've got the, you've already done the work. So let's use it to create, um, another fun card. All right. That's it for me today. Thank you so much for joining me. Don't forget to click that subscribe button below as well as the notification bell. Give me a thumbs up and uh, leave me a comment. I love to hear from you. Uh, have a great day and we'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.